right, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> Dr. Rai. All right, so today I'm going to talk about PID control using an accelerator, accelerometer and gyroscope feedback to control a self-balancing robot. So learned a lot so far, and accelerometers are very interesting, and they're used in many devices that we use every day. So your cell phone, probably in your pocket or your purse right now, has an accelerometer in it. Why? Because when you're playing that awesome new racing video game, when you steer your phone one way or the other, the accelerometer detects where your phone's center is, therefore controlling the game. Another use for an accelerometer, which you may not think of, is inside your laptop hard drive. So when your laptop is experiencing free fall, the accelerometer detects this and turns your hard drive off to prevent damage to your files and your hard drive, extending the life of your computer. Gyroscopes are used in many different uh, angular sensing um, uh, ways. So there's, they're also very awesome. And they can detect angular position after an integral uh, very accurately uh, with almost no error except for the drift incurred by the integral. So today I'm going to talk to you about balancing robot. So it must respond to the angle of the robot. So naturally, we want to be at 90 degrees, straight up and down. If we were here, it would not be balanced. If we were here, same deal. So we want to be able to sense where we are and account for that and then um, correct for it. So it has to respond to the angle of the robot. Now, could we use a single sensor? Well, we actually tried that at first, and it didn't quite work out. There's a few reasons why. So um, the accelerometer alone is very noisy, and uh, you can't totally rely on the data from just a filter and the accelerometer because if you observe this green signal right here, see how much of the fluctuation it has? Even when you're standing still, it finds every little movement that this thing's going through, and it uh, shoots a big high um, point on your graph there. So you gotta be careful of the accelerometer alone. Now, the gyroscope alone is also great, but due to the integral, it drifts over time. As you can see right here, when the object is staying still, there's this drift. Well, you might think to yourself, well, why is that happening? So you need to integrate the output from your gyroscope because uh, you want the angular position and not the um, angular speed. So the gyroscope's gonna give you the angular speed, but that's not really useful, especially in this, um, for, for this application. So um, the red line is what's called a complementary filter, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So um, as you can see, the complementary filter uh, accounts for uh, the drift of the gyroscope. And like I said, we'll get to that a little bit later. So um, on these chips, especially with the uh, accelerometer and gyroscope combined, you're gonna see six DOF. So what does that mean to you? Well, it's six degrees of freedom. So there's actually three separate accelerometers and three separate gyroscopes inside of an accelerometer so that it can detect movement in all three axes, X, Y, and Z. Same with the gyroscope. Moving on, we're gonna talk about sensitive data filtering. So um, we low pass our accelerometer because the high frequency noise that we can see in this graph right here comes out somewhat. But a low pass filter alone is not enough to get rid of everything. The reason this is because, once again, gravity and then a slight movement plus gravity creates a big spike on the accelerometer graph. So we want to high pass filter the gyroscope because you want a nice smooth signal and you don't want it to, um, to have big shoot ups. So um, once again, the integral drift, we have to uh, be careful of it because uh, over time, even when the object is still, there's a discrepancy that goes on between the actual value and what the gyroscope's outputting because the integral term accumulates error. So um, really quickly, I just uh, included some screenshots from our filters, the high pass and the low pass. So our pass band frequency for the high pass filter is 0.98, and our low pass pass band frequency is 0 0.02. If you'll notice, they add up to one, and they have to, because if they added up to more than one or less than one, we would get an accumulation of error or not enough data going on at the um, inputs of the PID. 
So um, here's the simulant model. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this right now because uh, I've got to save all the good, fun deets for later. But um, let me just say, this is some good stuff right here. So we have a step input. Everybody's familiar with that. Um, here's our PID broken out. So when you're in simulant, this is actually really awesome because each one of these can be controlled individually by a slider gain. So you don't have to rerun it a million times with the uh, regular PID controller. So you see an integrator right here um, and a derivative right there. And the proportional, as you know, is just multiplying the whole, si the whole thing. So uh, then they're all added up. And then we got a negative gain to move the motors whichever way um, the PID commands them to. So um, right here, we have a MATLAB function that combines um, our pin reads. And then we have a gain after that. So this is actually just our um, accelerometer right here. And we, we're, we're doing the Z and the Y direction um, from Arduino pin 0 and pin 1. So uh, like I said before, as you can see right here, uh, our low pass for the accelerometer, boom, right there. OK, here's our gyro read. Now, the gyro read block is actually really cool because we found a way to convert <clears throat> what the gyroscope puts out in I2C, which is not compatible with, um, with MATLAB because we need an analog signal. So this gyro read block converts what the gyro puts out in I2C to um, analog data, which we can then um, filter and integrate and do whatever we need to do um, to make it what we want. So <clears throat> now we're going to talk about Kalman and complementary filters. Why are they so important? Well, we're going to go back a little bit and see here. Once again, one of these sensors alone is not good enough. Although the gyro is very close, we encounter the drift. If this was to keep going, this large drift right here would continue throughout the rest of the, um, the sample. So the accelerometer, you can see every little movement is picking up. So let's see. Here's an awesome um, comparison between the red accelerometer, the green of the gyro, the blue of a Kalman filter, the black of a complementary filter, and the yellow of a second order complementary filter. So I know these might be hard to see, especially on the video. So let's just look at this gyro. Look at that drift. It's really big. And as you go on, especially when you're still, you see a very large drift. So the accelerometer, it's kind of noisy, kind of noisy, kind of noisy. And whoa, oh my goodness, it's shooting up so high that if you rely too much on the accelerometer, it's going to affect the system a lot. So we have to be careful. So the filters are right. If you see, they follow the gyroscope, but they're centered around zero where you want them. And this drift doesn't happen. So <clears throat> what's better? And what should we use in this situation? So as you can see, this is the Kalman filter. It's pretty awesome, but it's also ridiculous. So uh, you can't implement the Kalman filter on an 8-bit machine. You could on Arduino, but it's still pretty um, time consuming and interesting. So the Kalman filter is a linear quadratic estimating function. So it predicts and then updates based on what it sees as the um, current input and the past state that it was in. So these are the different states. Now you could say, well, for a bouncing robot, you could have hundreds of states. Well, these are only the states that we need to know. In this example um, I read about, it was a robotic arm. So it was fully open, halfway, and then uh, closed. So you only have three states. You want to minimize these because um, the more states, the more this all gets crazy. And that is a matrix. Um, you are the state actions. So basically, uh, the way it was explained was when the arm's fully open, what voltage does it need to do that? When it's halfway, what does it need to do that? And then what does it need to be here? So that's kind of self-explanatory. So P is another um, matrix. And it's the filter confidence. So the filter decides what it's confident in and what it's not. So basically, how much the signal's varying, could you trust it? So that's actually really interesting. Q <clears throat> is a system delay, and um, it's basically when the commands are sent versus when it actually happens on the device. So obviously, the Kalman filter is very advanced. Um, H is the sensor model. 
So it's how the sensors are modeled inside of the Kalman filter, and it's a diagonal matrix, and the way you populate this matrix is to run it, see what you have, and then adjust accordingly. So the R value is the fusion weight. So when you're fusing more than one sensor together, in our case, we're fusing the X and the Y for the accelerometer, and the X in the gyroscope. So um, this would be a three, a three by three matrix, diagonal once again. Um, and then the Z are the inputs. So Z is used to take the noise out of the inputs, which is very, very uh, useful in our application, especially with the accelerometer. Um, I is just the identity matrix. K is the values that are actually updated by the sensor. So you can see it right here, the measurements that go into the update equations. Um, and then we have A and B. In our case, we don't need B because we actually can't find it. So A is the only thing we need. So it's the last state, the pseudo, pseudo inverse of the last state, um, times the new, like what it's sensing right now, equals R A. And you can see these equations aren't crazy, but it is pretty advanced and hard to implement, especially on a simple machine like ours. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what did I get myself into? I just wanted to build a balancing robot. Why does it have to be the counted filter? Well, it doesn't. So here's a complementary filter. It's super simple to understand, and it makes a lot of sense. There's only, um, there's like nothing that you can't immediately find. So A is just the angle, where you are, no big deal. G weight and A weight, I'm going to talk about in one second. Here's A again. So it actually does depend on the past state of the system, but it's just not as ridiculous as the uh, Kalman filter where you have like 16 past states and it's trying to figure stuff out. And then there's a delay because this thing has to figure all that stuff out and it can't happen instantaneously. So um, A weight and G weight, no, they can never be the same. Now, why? Okay, so let's go back up here to this. Do you want to trust this crazy green thing here? I don't think so. Not really. But you do need it because without it, the gyroscope alone is going to drift. So the accelerometer is very important, but you can't trust it too much. So um, they can never be equal. You actually want G weight to be almost entirely one and this to be almost none. For our particular example, if you look at uh, the simulink diagrams here, uh, this was 0.98, so that's 98% of the gyroscope and 2% of the accelerometer. So basically you're still keeping it centered and you're keeping it honest without drifting and um, it's, it's good. So you can keep uh, tuning these uh, G, the accelerometer weight and the uh, gyroscope weight according to what you need for your system. So Sometimes you'll need a heavier weight on the accelerometer to keep the gyroscope honest, and sometimes you'll need a heavy, heavier weight on the gyroscope to keep um, the accelerometer from taking over the system with all the noise. So, um, like I said before, it accounts for drift, and your only real variable is angle, and you don't have to do anything with it. So this is really simple, and uh, you have a derivative in there, no big deal. So um, the clear choice here is the complementary filter, unless you want to spend a ton of time trial and erroring the Kalman filter. Because without, without spending a ton of time and a ton of trial and errors, you're not going to get the Kalman filter to act right. And as you can see here, there's almost no difference between the Kalman and the complementary filter. Yes, if you want to argue that even the second order complementary filter is a bit more noisy than the Kalman, yes, but for the amount of time and for the amount of space and um, all the different equations you have to go through, it's not worth it at all. So um, the clear choice is a uh, complementary filter, and that's what we implemented because um, you have both both of the inputs, uh, gyroscope and accelerometer, uh, weighted, added up, and that gives you where you are with no drift and no craziness from the accelerometer. So um, argument that Mike and I had, and I think that we came to a uh, conclusion was. Do the sensor mounting locations matter? So you think to yourself, well, I don't know, it should just balance, right? Yes, but no. So this is not our exact robot, but it gives us a good idea of what um, a multi-tier balancing robot would look like and where we could put the sensors. 
So you think to yourself, well, if I put the accelerometer and gyroscope on the bottom, it would be the same as the top, right? No. If you think and look at this um, pointer move, the top is moving way more while the bottom is just moving a little bit. So you have to be careful and you have to place the sensors accordingly. So basically, you want the gyroscope higher and the accelerometer lower. Why? Because a tiny bit of uh, angle up here matters to the whole thing, but the accelerometer is going to interpret that too much. So we're going to get a huge variation and we don't want that. But the gyroscope is good up top because it can be more accurate. So you're seeing five degrees versus less than one at the bottom. So um, accelerometer high, or I mean accelerometer low, gyroscope high. Any questions?